So I will be continuing with our playlist and before that, hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we will be solving today is adding two numbers in linked list. So you'll be given L1 and you'll be given L2. So L1 is basically a number given to you in reverse order. So the number is 642. If I write down the number, it is 642. It is given to you in reverse order and every digit is in a node of the linked list. Got it? You have L2. Now L2 is 783. Again in the reversed order. So once you write down the numbers, the task is to add them up. If you add them up, you'll get 5. Right? You'll get 5. After that, you will get 12. Carrying over 1. 6 plus 1 is 7. 7 plus 7 is 14. Carries over 1. So the result is 1425. You don't return the number. Instead, you put all the, yes, you put all the digits into a node in a reversed manner. So at first you will have 5. So what I can do is I can take 5. Perfect. That will be pointing to 2. That will be pointing to 4. And that will be pointing to 1. Once this is done, you will be returning the head of the linked list, which is this one. So this one is nothing but sum list. Now what is this? It's a list storing the result of addition of two numbers but in the reversed order. So let's look at one more example. This is L1. This is L2. So if I write down the first number, that's 53 because 35 in the reversed is 53. Let's uh, look at L2. That's 9954. 9954. Let's add them up. You will get 7. You'll get 10. Carries over 1, 10, carries over 1, 10, 1, 1, triple, 0, 7. Again, you need to return the sum list, but in the reverse order. So at first, you will have 7. So let's have 7. Perfect. After that, you will have 0. After that, you will again have 0. After that, you will again have 0, followed by 1 and then pointing to null. Once this is done, this will be the head of the linked list that you will be returning. And over here, this is the sum list, which is storing the summation of two numbers, but in the reversed order. In order to solve, so in order to solve this particular problem, you should have deep understanding about mathematics. When you add two numbers, we basically start from the unit place, right? That's from the last and you add them up, right? After that, you take the carryover and then you add the next one. Then you take the carryover, you add the next one. Then you take the carryover, then you add it. That's what you do, right? Where do you start from? The unit place. And if you look at your L1 and L2, the first head is nothing but the unit place because the number is given to you in the reversed order. So can I straight away say, okay, 3 plus 4 will go to a new node. Makes sense, right? And after that, if there is a carryover, I will take it. Otherwise, I'll go to the next nodes. 5 plus 5 is 10. That's basically 0 because 10 modulo 10 is 0. And then we carry over 1. So 1 plus 9 is 0. 10, 0. And then we carry over 1. So 1 plus 9 is again 10. So it goes to the new node. And we carry over 1. 1 plus there is nothing. So we can straight away put them into a new node. Do I need to do anything different? It is just a simple traverse, isn't it? We simply traverse and we add them up and we put them into a new nodes, right? We just need to formulate or we just need to form a new sum list. That is what our goal should be. And the good thing is the sum list will also be in the reversed order. So I don't need to return this one. So I just simply put them up, put them up, put them up and we return the head because we need to return the sum list in the reversed order as well. So you have got the intuition, right? Now let's quickly see how can we solve this particular problem. What I will do is, initially I will assign a dummy node. So this is my dummy node. And it will have a value, let's say minus one. You can put anything uh, according to your choice. And I'll take a variable current. Now this current will be used to traverse in your sum list. You'll understand. At the same time, I will take a temporary one. And I'll take a temporary two, right? And I'll take a variable carry. Let's take a variable carry. Initially, the carry is having zero. 
let's start we are at t1 we are at t2 what are the values 3 plus 4 add them up 7 plus a carry of 0 gives you a total value of 7 it's 7 under 10 right so what you do is you create a new node and you put that value 7 and make sure the current it's next is pointing to this done once you have done this take current over here because this current will be used to traverse in your sum list so after this we will take t1 and t2 to the next we have 5 and 5 that's basically 10 10 plus carry over 0 is 10 right so how much will you take 0 so you'll take it and put it into a new node so if you're putting 0 what is the carry over 1 very simple mathematics right done what is the next job make sure current is pointing to this and then move current over here what current is basically doing is it is forming your sum list once this is done you will take t1 it will move ahead to null and t2 will move over here right so over here you see that t1 is pointing to null so you don't have any value from there whereas t2 is still having 9 so 9 plus the carry over 1 is 10 so the value is 0 right when you do a modulo create a new node put 0 and again take the carry over as 1 make sure the current is pointing to the new node and then the current moves to the next done you cannot move t1 so just move t2 again do the same thing you have 9 you have the carry over 1 9 plus 1 is 10 we'll again take 0 so create a new node put 0 and then make sure the current is pointing to this and then the carryover is 1 and then you move the current over here done once this is done t2 moves to the next which is null the moment t1 is pointing to null and t2 is pointing to null both of them both of them are pointing to null you stop so once your t1 is reaching null and t2 is reaching null it means that the traversal is completed via all the digits what is left there is a carryover left so make sure at the last step you add this carryover to a new node and the current is pointing to this new node and this new node is obviously pointing to null once this is done you have added everything where is your head this is your head but you took a dummy node right you took a dummy node so can i say dummy nodes next is your head yes so the dummy nodes next is your head and this is what you will return so you might have a question hey why do we need the dummy node because technically my sum list should be starting from here then what is the use of dummy node let me write the code and then you will understand when we use the concept of dummy node the implementation is very simple like if i don't use dummy node the implementation will get a lot messier let me write down the pseudo code and in case you want the code for c java python or javascript the links will be in the description so let's write this function where you're given head one, which is the head one of the L1 and you're given head two, which is the head two of the L2. What is the first job? Let's declare T1 to be head one. And let's have T2 to be head two. What is the next job? Having a dummy node. So maybe a dummy node. You can assign any value to it. I'll be assigning minus one. And let's have a current which is pointing to this dummy node. Perfect. What is the next job? Traversing. And you know that I will traverse till both of them are null. So if this is not null or or T2 is not null, I will be traversing. I'll only stop if both of them are null. Perfect. What is my next job? I need a carry, right? So maybe a carry initially initialized to zero will help. Perfect. What will be my sum? Can I say sum will be carry to start off with and then if, if, if t1 is there, I will say sum equal to sum plus t1's data. Perfect. If t2 is there, if these nodes are there, they haven't reached null, I'll be adding that sum equal to sum plus t2 data. What after that? I need to create a new node. So let's create a new node. So new node equal to new node and the value will be 
sum modulo 10, right? What will be the value of carry? The carry will be sum by 10, perfect. And can I say the current will be pointing to this new node or rather the current's next will be. The current's next will be pointing to this new node. So go ahead and point it. And after that you can say curl, can you go to this new node? So basically curl of next. After this, you have done everything that's required to add them up. The next job will be to take T1 and T2 to the next. But please, please make sure if T1 is not at null, then only you'll do T1 dot next. Otherwise, it will throw a null pointer exception. If this is null and you say null dot next, null dot, whenever you say null dot something, so you are doing something dot on something. So it's a null pointer exception. And then you write if T2, so T2 will be T2 dot next. Perfect. The while loop is completed. Am I done? No, I am not done. What is the next job? The next job is to make sure if there is a leftover carry, if there is a leftover carry, again, take a new node, put it into a new node, this carry, and make sure the curve next is pointing to this new node. Once this is done, what is the last step? The last step is to return the head. So return of dummy node next because the dummy nodes next will be your head the dummy nodes next will be your head right so this dummy node dot next uh, is basically this one so this will be your head right and this is what you will return did you observe something because of the dummy node the implementation was clean right if you did not take this dummy node in case then you would have said if t1 is at the head one if T2 is at the head 2, whatever is the addition, it goes to a new node and this new node will become my head of some list and you store it somewhere. So it gets messier. You need to write if T1 equal to equal to something, something. So always remember, whenever you need to create a new list where you store the result or something, always prefer the concept of dummy node. You can always point it and then get the next or rather get the head by saying dot next. It's very clean. It's easier. It doesn't messes up your implementation. Got it? What about the time complexity? Can I say that the time complexity will be big O of max of N1 comma N2 where N1 is the length of linked list L1 and N2 is the length of L2. What about the space complexity? Same big O of max of N1 comma N2 but remember, this is used for storing the result that the question is asking. So technically, I'm not using anything to solve the question because this one is used for storing the result the question is asking. I cannot optimize this because I need to store the result. That is what the question is asking me. So this is the time complexity and the space complexity for this one. So if I go back to the code editor, you can see that there's a function add two numbers. We are given num1 and num2. We take a dummy head. Take a current, temporary 1 and temporary 2, carry as 0, Travis uh, tell both of them, yes, both of them. After that, you have the sum as carry. If they exist, you add them up, create a new node, have the carry, and after that, curve will be pointing to the new node, move the curve to the next. If the temporary 1 is there, move it to the next, otherwise you move temporary 2, like both of them. And then if there exists a carry after the traversal is completed, you create a new node, point it, and right at the end, return dummy head of next. If I go ahead and submit this, this will be running fine. So if you are still watching, I'm very sure that you've understood everything. And if that is the case, please do consider giving us a like. And if you're new to our channel, what are you doing? Consider subscribing, man. And with this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's explain some other video. Tell them bye-bye. Take care. Whenever your heart is broken, don't ever